I am Woody, and this is Kai. Hi, Kai. How you doing? I'm pretty good. And instead of doing our normal crit play thing, as we usually do, we are going to be talking about what we have played this year. This is the Games of Interest Spectacular. It's going to be very, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to spend just a few minutes talking about everything we've played, um, if you should play it, what we think of it, that kind of a thing. So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, first game on the list, Wolf Among Us. Wolf Among Us, really great, best Telltale game yet, one of the best stories of the year, and I think it utilizes Telltale's signature, now perhaps redundant comic book arc style, in a really smart way, and to the best effect they've done so far, and it has amazing music. I agree that it's probably the best thing they've done so far, I mean, it's it's problematic, it's got a lot of the same problems as their other game, you know, I would have liked to see a little more variety in how your choices eventually affect things, but there's kind of an upper limit on what you can actually do with that, mm -hmm. and it did present some really cool scenarios, and unlike their Walking Dead games, I'm not really familiar with Fables all that much outside of this game, and I got a bit more into it because I couldn't predict how the setting was going to go as much as I might be able to if it was something I was more familiar with. So I really like that. Yeah, I was the same way. Um, I, granted, I haven't watched or read Walking Dead, but uh, I think just, you know, when you play The Walking Dead Season 1 or Season 2 or whatever, there's certain things you kind of expect to happen. Um, and... Well, there's zombie tropes. It's right. not necessarily, like, exact plot developments, but, you know, someone's going to get bitten and try to hide it, that sort of a thing. Yeah, it, it wasn't uh, as exciting as The Wolf Among Us, which was such a creative and fresh idea, I think, and uh, they capitalized on that really well. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Ground Zeroes. Now, this is kind of an odd one. I don't really know how I feel about this, because it's basically just a $30 demo, at least when it released. Yeah, it's like you're paying for the tanker chapter from Metal Gear Solid 2. It's like its own game, kind of. I wouldn't even call it the tanker chapter, oh. really. Mm. Um, okay, that sucks. <laughs> mechanically, it was interesting. Like, I thought it was a good, like, promising setup of what MGS5 is going to end up being like. But there is just not a lot of content here, mm -hmm. and the content that is there is replaying through the same level multiple times. 30 bucks. <laughs> and, yeah, I rented this and beat it in a day, and that was all I needed to get out of it. Alright, well, I'm glad you didn't actually buy it. And I would have felt cheated had I actually bought this. And more annoyingly, I felt like the plot, even though I knew it was just kind of going to be a teaser thing, it didn't really give me, like, enough of a thing, like... You don't need to actually play this to understand anything about the game, because nothing really happens. That's what I'd gather. It's like barely a rising action for the next game, so... Yeah, pretty much one one cutscene is important. And then it's also, too, um, and I'll be interested to see how MGS5 takes this, it's really tied into Peace Walker. It's probably the most direct Metal Gear sequel that there is. I think it's even more of a direct sequel than Metal Gear Solid 2 was. Yeah, that's really strange because um, Peace Walker had a pretty limited audience. It didn't sell that well. And it probably had the worst story of any, like, canon Metal Gear Solid game there is. <laughs> so that's disappointing, to say the least. As for Ground Zeroes, you don't need to play this. Like, if you can get this for nothing, it might be worth it. <laughs> and if you really want to see what MGS5 is going to turn out like... I guess you could get it, but, you know, I got all I needed at, in an hour, and even that was, aside from the gameplay being interesting, just not worth it. Gotcha. So, uh, let's see. The next one is a game you have played I have not. Thief. Thief. I thought, you know what? Oh, man, I'm looking at my list. Um, I'm not going to say it's the most underrated game of the year, but it's, like, up there. It's, like, number two. Uh, I thought this game was quite good. And it seems no one else in the world agrees with me. Um, a very first-person, stealth-focused adventure game. Lots of content. You know, ample room to explore. More scripted and linear than a Thief game should be. And, I mean, the story is just total nonsense. So, And it feels unfinished in that regard. But uh, if you play it on next-gen consoles or on PC, it looks really good. It, it, it controls well. Um, and, you know, I guess it is kind of casualized. It's, you know, mainstream marketed. But... For, you know, a modern-day stealth game, you know, it's no Dishonored, but I thought it was not too far off. You know, I liked it, so. There was a lot of kind of funky stuff that came out pre-release, and obviously I haven't played it, like, I think, like, there was some weird, like, you have to buy a whole bunch of stuff on, like, the weird EXP system or something like that, that it, 
it's a, a common complaint I heard that it felt tacked on, and from everything I saw, it really seemed like it was tacked on, and that kind of made me not want to play it. They actually changed that. They took out the experience system. So oh, okay. it's just like anything you hide, like you steal stuff during gameplay and it adds to your money, and you just buy stuff with money. Um, and uh, the game has like a, a self, it basically is designed for self-imposed challenges for purists. So if you play in the master difficulty setting, you can set all kinds of things like items cost twice as much, or you can't buy anything, or um, if you were spotted, the level ends. If you take damage, the level ends. If you attack or knock out anyone, or just civilians... The level ends, you know, things like that. So um, it it definitely has... I, I think that it probably wasn't designed enough from the ground up to appeal to stealth purists like it should, but I think they tried to do as best they could in retrospect to kind of fix that near the end of development, which was admirable, but obviously didn't make for a perfect game. So. <laughs> All right, so that sounds like kind of a mid-range recommendation, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I liked. I mean, I think it's probably like twenty, thirty bucks. If you like stealth games, I would highly recommend it. So, all right, sounds good. All right, next up, we've got <laughs> we have Dark Souls Two. Dark Souls next. Two. Uh, I think. The, Do we need to say anything about the this? The only <laughs> the only thing I'm going to say is that it is the second best game that came out this year. So, ooh, <laughs> that's going to be interesting. See, I'm kind of I'm I'm iffy about saying stuff's hardline game of the year or not you know it kind of depends on how i'm feeling that day of whether or not i like something more or less but um i guess to sum up my thoughts on dark souls 2 in one sentence is that i think it's a really great game but it was a slightly disappointing sequel to dark souls i was i had a pretty open opinion about it and uh i'm generally not disappointed with games that rarely happens so however remarkably improved with the dlc yeah and i am excited to play the new version next year exactly i I think that'll be good um yeah dark souls 2 i was not disappointed with it i mean it it did some things better than its predecessor and did some things worse which i think you generally kind of expect so pvp i think was unquestionably better Mm -hmm. but that's not really the reason i play the souls games all that much and um overall it's not necessarily that I thought the game was bad, but that I thought it could have been a lot more. I don't know. I, I was still immensely satisfied with it, but, and it had those those really great moments that I feel like no other game could have given me. So I, I still think it's like a, a 9, 9.5 game. So. All right. Well, this is a whole hole, and we'll fall down it eventually <laughs> when we get to it in the quick play videos. But <laughs> All right. Let's see. Keep moving on. Another game you have played and I have not, Titanfall. Titanfall. I bought this on a whim. It was on sale for 10 bucks on Amazon a couple months ago, or a month ago or something. And uh, it's great. It, I didn't know what to expect. I had no expectations, really. Uh, only that it came out the same day as Dark Souls 2. People seem to like it, whatever. Uh, I'm not much for the multiplayer shooters like that. But this game is awesome. It is so fast-paced. It has a great sense of momentum. And uh, it has this really awesome sense of cohesion and strategy that once you get it down, even though the game with your mobility and the map design seems a lot more chaotic on the surface, uh, there's a lot to it, especially with how you can pilot your mech directly inside of it, or you can let it be like an AI thing that roams around and follows you, so you can use it to flank enemies. I mean, there's a lot of options that you have. Um, and it doesn't have microtransactions, thank God, uh, or, or <laughs> anything to circumvent you actually just playing the game for fun. So I was really appreciative of that. Um, yeah, Titanfall, awesome game. <laughs> uh, I have to be a bit of a hipster on Titanfall and say that the marketing for this game before it came out completely turned me off to playing it. And um, I know I mentioned it, you got it in a, in a sale, so you didn't get it like right when it came out or anything. Mm-hmm. My hesitance in buying the game was not liking how much it was hyped up as being the next big thing, despite me not really knowing anybody who was hyped for Titanfall coming out. That's ironic, because I would say that it does feel significantly different from other multiplayer shooters. I I don't keep up on Call of Duty and Battlefield like that well, but, you know, Call of Duty added jetpacks recently, I guess. So I would say it still feels very different from Call of Duty. I would still say it still feels very different from Battlefield. Um, I'm not going to say it is the next big thing, but I thought it, I mean, for online multiplayer shooters, uh, I thought it was a pretty big thing. It's the only one I put more than, you know, 10 hours into since, like, Battlefield, Bad Company 2, or Team Fortress 2, so. Alright, well, that sounds, sounds like you really like that. I've I've had enough people recommend that to me now whose opinions I trust that I think I'm going to have to actually try this at some point. Mm -hmm. 
Next game we've got on the list is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle. Um, I have played this. I don't think you have. I have not. I play good fighting games. <laughs> That's basically right. Um, this is mechanically not a great game. Mm -hmm. If you like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, it's a pretty good game. Okay. And it's kind of the fun anime fighter thing where it's like almost every single character that has been in a fight in JoJo is in this game. It has a ludicrously huge roster, and it's definitely not mechanically complex, and it's not necessarily rewarding, but if you just want to jump in and kind of have dumb fun, then it's a pretty fun game. Mm -hmm. Our next game, another one you've played, I have not, Steam World Dig. Steam World Dig. This is on, I think, everything now, uh, including PC, so if you're watching this, you can buy it on Steam, and if you're watching it during a holiday sale, you can probably buy it for like five bucks. Um, this is like a 2D steampunk western style game about robots doing digging, <laughs> that mining is a lot stuff. Of styles. Yeah, uh, I would not have even acknowledged this game's existence. Um, but uh, you know, years and years ago, I got into the Team Fortress 2 fandom, and I met a lot of really great artists and super cool people through that. And one of the artists that I became acquainted to, I you know, I followed on Tumblr and kept up with her. Uh, she did art direction for this game, so she did character designs and things like that. So I was like, oh, that's super cool. So I, I bought it just on proxy of the fact that I knew someone associated with it. Uh, and it's also, you know, not very expensive. I got it on 3DS. But it's actually really fun. Um, it, initially, I think people would think of it something like Terraria or Minecraft, but it's actually something more of like a, um, a little, sort of like a town building story driven, you know, adventure platforming game. Oh, that that's was... actually, that I actually really like low-scale town-building stuff. Yeah, I, I think... It, I mean, you finish it in five, six hours. It's not very long, but I think you get your money's worth, and it was something that's like, oh, it was nice, sweet. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was good, so... That sounds nice. That sounds similar to something I'm going to talk about here in a while. Okay, cool. Let's see, next thing I have played, and I have played this, I don't think you did, was Among the Sleep. Among the Sleep. Um, Among the Sleep is the horror game where you play as a toddler. Yeah, I remember seeing a very promising teaser about this i think years ago and then i think yeah it was, was it, it showed up it was a real promising teaser and everything mm -hmm. playing the game it's really scary for a while mm -hmm. but <laughs> it's hard to get into specifics without being spoilery on this one okay but um it gets to a point where there's some rather hackneyed metaphorical stuff going on and I found it really, like, groan-worthy. Oh. And it didn't ruin the game for me, because what I had played up to that point was very atmospheric. Mm -hmm. But it was one of those things where, about 30 minutes into the game, I said, gee, I hope the game doesn't do this, and then it did the thing. Oh, that sucks. And... It is very, it's very atmospheric, and they do, they do do some cool stuff with it, and I'd recommend it. And, like, playing as a toddler, there's kind of, like, some cool elements to it, and it's really nicely first person. Like, your head bobs all up and down, and you can see your limbs and everything. Mm -hmm. And there's a cool element, like, um, like, you have to hug your teddy bear to light up stuff and stuff like that. Okay. How long is it? Oh, it's, it's short, like, a few hours. Okay. So, yeah, um, like, it's the kind of game where if you get it on a Steam sale for cheap, I'd say it's totally worth it. Mm-hmm. And even then, my complaints with it have less to do with the gameplay, which is still pretty good. Gotcha. And um, it's just kind of more to do with spoilery stuff that happens later on. Roger that. Next, we've got an, again, another game that I have not played, and you have, is Infamous Second Son. Yes. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the Infamous series. I played the first one a little bit. It came with my PS3 when I bought it in 2009. And I thought it was alright. I watched my friends play it, and the only thing I can remember coming off of it, mainly, was that it had the most wretched, annoying cast of characters I've ever seen in a game. <laughs> like, terrible main character, terrible love interest, terrible sidekick best friend, awful, I mean, just, like, total garbage all the way through. Um, and then, uh, you know, Infamous Second Son, I... You know, it looked kind of neat, I guess. But it wasn't really on my radar. Then my friend owned it, and I bought a PS4, so I borrowed it from her. And uh, it's... I liked it a lot. Um, I, I thought that maybe the end came a little bit quickly. 
but I didn't pay for it, so I yeah, wasn't I, that's, really... Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've heard it's a fairly short game, even, like, if for a sandbox game. Even, like, if you want 100% it, it's, like, 15 hours or something. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to it, but then again, I didn't pay 60 bucks for it, so I wasn't... I, I feel like that did not... It have as, I didn't have as much perspective about its value. So, I mean, I... And uh, coming from a series initially where I didn't really care for it, uh, I actually liked it a lot, especially because the characters in it were great. I was a big fan of the protagonist, who is another Troy Baker voice motherfucker. Um, and uh, God damn, Troy Baker! Yeah, Troy Baker is in everything. Exactly, uh, and his brother actually is, his, you know, the main character's brother. That's kind of where the entire second son, you know, subtitle comes in. Um, he's great too. Uh, some of the sidekick and, and other characters, the villain's great. Uh, I thought the story was surprisingly good, and it looks gorgeous. I think when people are talking about next-gen games and things like that, I feel like this game is, you know, very sorely underrepresented, and, you know, I had a lot of fun with it, so that one... Well, hopefully the next PlayStation All-Stars game can have, like, eight characters from this, then. Yeah, exactly. We'll have, we'll have, uh, oh my god, uh, I already forgot them. Good main character, main evil main character. character. Light main <laughs> character, and then the main character with his different jackets, so there's, like, five versions of that, and there you go, so... <laughs> Next up, we've got something I have played, you have not, and that is Murdered, Soul Suspect. Oh, man. Uh, I <laughs> I was all... I've, I feel like I've shit on so many things that you played that I haven't. I better just stay out of this, so... No, uh, you, can, you can shit on this one. It kind of deserves here, it. Here's, here's my question. Why did you play it? Uh, I played this because I really like... Um, detective stuff and like okay. especially supernatural detective stuff it's one of those things it basically hit a bunch of my like personal buttons that I really like mm -hmm. for games like stylistically boy did it not really deliver on that man that is unfortunate <laughs> and it's short and there's not there's not a lot to go through thankfully um, <laughs> the plot is... It's one of those bad detective things where there are too few characters oh, in the game. Oh, okay. And you know by the process of elimination that there's barely any possibilities for who could be doing what. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because you know the game's not just going to pull off like, oh, it was just this dude you've never met. Right. It's, you know, it's going to be somebody from the game and there's like seven named characters Boy, that is a bummer. <laughs> it felt like, it, and it's like an oddly low scale game too. Like, there's like the stakes aren't really that high. I mean, your main character dies in the first five minutes, and it's like, oh yeah, just go figure out stuff out. You're, you'll be fine. Hmm. And even like the, it's it's so low scale. It's not even really satisfying. That sucks. It it's like you might get do a thing with the character that you probably don't even like. And that's it. Damn. So, oh yeah, don't play Murdered. It's all suspect. <laughs> okay. It wasn't good. I'm sorry to hear that. Another game that I have played and you have not, um, Valiant Hearts. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, I really wanted to play this. I, I was torn because this came out around E3, I think, and I really wanted yeah, to play it. Yeah, this came out in June. But I was like super like upset at Ubisoft. Uh, at the time, <laughs> like, I think a lot of people were, and I'm sure that people watching this fucking hate me now. Uh, yeah, I was like, man, fuck you guys. Like, Ubisoft, you guys suck. And they have sucked this year, by the way. Like, it did not end at oh, E3. Ubisoft, their PR this year has been a continuing stream of just foot-in-mouth stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, not e It's such... It's such a level of stupid mm. that it is... Be like, if you just said what was going on in your minds and gave us the straight answer, it would actually be less bad than the damage control they're trying to do. Right. I, I think the best thing they've done is I think they patched Unity into something, like, worth playing less than a month after it came out, which is better than can be said for other games. I think Halo was still fucked up and that and came gave out the same day. I think they also gave everybody who bought Unity to the season pass, which right. is like, which is like, I don't know if it's like Stockholm Syndrome with game publishers <laughs> or something, like, I guess that's nice. We're sorry this but... game sucked, have more of it. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. But people who... Anyway, let's actually talk about Valiant Hearts. Well, uh, the one good thing they did is people who were unfortunate enough to buy the season pass got Far Cry 4 for free. 
That's pretty good. <laughs> they got a much better game. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, yeah, the game itself, the subject of discussion, so. Yeah, yeah, Valiant Hearts, this is the, it's made in the Ubi Art engine, which I really, really like. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what they did Child of Light in, which is another game I played. Um, it's what they've done uh, Rayman Legends and Rayman Origins in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really hope they do some more stuff with it. It's a cool engine. Um, it's set during World War One, and it's really kind of got... It's a funky dichotomy, because it's got this really cutesy kind of cartoony art style. And then it's about World War One. Yeah. And it's... Really weird to see, like, all these, like, supposedly horrible events, and then you're playing as, like, you're, you're hitting people with a soup ladle. Like, one of that's one of your character's main weapons. Yeah. One of the characters you play as. But the game itself is actually pretty cool. It's, like, stealth and puzzle solving. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty neat little game. I really like the tone that it takes, because it kind of takes this funky, neutral tone, and it's, like... People on all sides of World War One got messed up and stuff, and there's, like, a lot of factual stuff. Every collectible item in the game comes with, like, a couple of paragraphs of information, and it's, like, narrated, and it's actually pretty informative. Like, I would say it almost approaches, like, like it's the point that it's legitimately educational. Right, I've heard it described as, as like, borderline edutainment. So. Yeah, it's a really fun, like, unique concept for a game. And it's just a really nice take on, like, somebody doing, like, a war game. And then it's actually fun gameplay, too. The animation's great and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, like, a super must-play or anything, because I think ultimately it ends up being pretty simple. But it's kind of one of those games where it's just kind of a delightful little fun game, and, you know, it's not really long or anything. Yeah. So um, I'd recommend it. You know, it's not expensive or anything. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool game. Yeah. I might play it. Um... The trailer, boy, that is the saddest trailer I've ever seen for a game. <laughs> so. <laughs> so speaking of UbiR Engine, I guess I'll just transition into Child of Light. I also did not play that. Yes, Child of Light. That was the other Ubi Art game released this year. Child of Light is a really weird thing where it's a major studio trying to make an indie game. And, like, this is an aggressively indie-styled major release. Mm-hmm. Like, Ubisoft really wanted you to think that, like, five people made this in a basement. Child of Light, five minutes into this game. I don't know if you know this. It's kind of like a storybook-style thing, you know, very pretty graphics and all this stuff, and part of that aesthetic is that all the dialogue rhymes. I've heard that, yeah, it all rhymes. This gets old in five minutes. Oh, man. And it keeps doing it for the rest of the game. I was going to say, I don't think you could possibly get keep enough decent rhymes for an entire rpg there is maybe five or six rhymes in the game that made like that got like i got a chuckle out of like oh that's actually creative Mm -hmm. all of the other ones were awful oh god that sucks and it's awful in the way where it's like you know if they make you like write a poem in middle school or something so you're like trying to use the dictionary to find words that rhyme with the word you're using and they'll make sense right it's 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 bad Mm. That sucks. And, um, aside, so aside from that, like, the story actually, it actually has really nice development, and there's some cool things, like, that happen later on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really good game for, like, younger kids, I could see having a lot of fun with it. Especially, there's, like, a funky co-op mode that's pretty cool, too. Like, um, if you had a younger sibling you wanted to play with or something. My first but, um, RPG. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Um, the battle system's weird. You only get two characters, and the enemies can have three characters, I wrote a really long, super in-depth thing um, a while back, like, on the combat system in this, and basically it's utterly broken on hard mode because the game has no way to make itself difficult without feeling incredibly cheap. Oh. Hm. And it leads to battles where the only solution is to just cheese out the enemies, which you can either do that or you will just lose. Well, so so define it's basic- cheese. Like, what does that entail? Um, cheese as in... Um, use the exact same strategy that you figure out works every single fight. Which is, if you get into a boss fight that has three enemies, you need to take out one of them immediately, and once you kill one enemy in the boss fight, you will win automatically. Because it's super easy after that point. Oh, weird. Okay. So basically, you just come into a boss fight with all of your most powerful characters out on the front, and try to kill one of them as fast as you can. Huh. And then, once you manage to get that down, you will win. And then, because that's, they, the boss can't do anything after that. It's a really lame combat system, to the point where I would say, 
there are two difficulties when you start. There's like medium and hard. Play it on medium. It's probably more fun. Oh wow. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, hard's not great. Um, yeah, overall, I, I I mixed on Child of Light. I really wanted to like it more, but I really didn't. Mm, gotcha. Uh, 